I'll, I'll be taking the script order before September 30th. So if you need gift cards for the next month or so, please see me. Right now we do have a bonus on Quick Trip for 9% versus 4%. So if you need gas cards, um, please see me either today or catch me in the next couple weeks and we'll get an order in for the church. Thank you. Any other announcements today? All right, low announcement day. <laughs> All right, we continue our worship. Please stand for confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God. We confess that we are bodies to sin and cannot free ourselves. has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God among us, we gather in the name of your Son to learn love for one another. Keep our feet from evil paths. Turn our minds to your wisdom and our hearts to the grace revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amos was called by God to prophesy in the northern kingdom of Israel. Peace and prosperity in Israel led to corrupt business practices and oppression of the poor. The prophet declares that God will not tolerate such a situation. A reading from Amos, the eighth chapter. Hear this, you trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over, so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the epis small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. The word of the Lord. The pastoral ep epistles offer insight into how early Christians understood many practical matters such as church administration and worship. The church's focused prayer for others is an expression of the single-minded passion God has toward us in Jesus. A reading from 1 Timothy, the second chapter. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving should be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, 
there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles of faith and truth, the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel affirmation. Maybe take some more videos of my cat. And uh, 
just play some games for a little bit. What do you think? Think that'd be okay? What do you think? I almost beat that level. Almost. Earth to pastor. Yes? Oh, I'm doing a children's sermon. Uh-oh. Does that happen sometimes when we get a phone or the TV or a game? We get so focused on the game or the thing. Like, I just want to go take pictures and film videos of my cat or play games. And it kind of comes between me and doing other stuff, right? Like, I'm not hanging out with my friends. I'm sitting on my phone. Or, you know, my husband wants to talk to me and I'm playing a game on my phone. Or I'm supposed to be preaching in church and I'm playing on my phone. That's no good, is it? Well, the Bible talks about money or stuff, in this case, this is a smartphone, coming between us and God. If I'm on my phone all the time and not doing what God is telling me to do, to go tell other people about Jesus, that's not good, is it? No. So you need to be mindful. You need to think about that. That are we pleasing God with how we are behaving and acting? And are there things coming between us and God, like a smartphone? So think about that this week, and I have an accounting sheet for you. This one's a, got a goofy picture. Look at this picture. That's kind of weird, isn't it? It looks like a two-headed person, but it's one person <laughs> leaving with two heads, one to God <laughs> and one to money. So you can have that little bit of an odd one. And here's this one. Thank you for coming up. Thanks. Thank you. Today, I am the manager. Why is everybody laughing? <laughs> Have you ever seen those memes on the internet that say you only have one job? You only have one job. Well, my boss called me in. And I became a meme. I had one job, and I messed up. You see, my boss is a rich man, owns a lot of properties, owns a lot of possessions and yachts and everything else. And I serve my boss my master, who, oh, by the way, uh, forgot to mention, I am enslaved. It's ancient times, so, yeah, I have to do what he says. I, I have a job, as you all heard about from that wonderful pastor a few weeks ago about how enslaved people can be working. So I have this job and I have to go and collect the rent from people and bring it back to this rich man who owns all the properties. So I go out and I go to all the people, typically, on a typical day, I collect the funds, maybe take a little from myself, and go back to the boss and bring him everything I collected. This time he, he called me into the office. Come in, I gotta talk to you. 
I know you've been a dishonest manager. Busted. I hear that the accounting, I need accounting for everything that's been going on. I need to know what's going on. I'm gonna have to let you go. Ooh. I said, let me go. Is that gonna fire now or can I like have a couple weeks to wrap things up and delete all my emails? Huh. What are my options here? I get fired, okay? Um, ooh. I can explain to the boss. You know what? I can't go digging. <laughs> I'm about that. Not in these heels. No. Um, I'm not about to beg to people for money. I can't do that either. <sighs> think, think. All right, I got it. I'm going to go to those folks, get all the money, and I'm going to make some bargains. Because if I give them a deal, then they're going to owe me. They're going to think, oh, they owe 100 and I have them pay 50. Then we're good. They're going to remember me and what I did. So that's what I do. Jet some oil, wheat, make some deals, take the money, and I, I can go back to the manager now. All right. Okay, I know I'm fired. Will I get the job back? I don't know, but at least I've got my backup plan in place, and these people will take care of me. Go back to the manager, and I'm still fired. But you know what? I'm commended. Great job. Great job on what you just did. Wait a minute. Hold on. What is going on here? I'm still fired. Hmm. This parable is confusing. Any number of commentaries that a preacher will read about them say that this is one of the most difficult parables in the Bible. Now go preach. Yes. What is going on here? There's somebody that's being dishonest. Right? And we're thinking if somebody's dishonest, they should get kicked in the rear and fired and Sent to jail. And he's commended. Great job. You were acting truly. Huh? Well, you see, that manager was likely enslaved and had to do whatever that boss said. And there is a case that whatever the manager was going out to collect, he was acting as an agent, whatever he was going to collect, he was collecting a little bit above, and that was his income. So in making those deals, 50 and 80, he was really just reducing his cut, I'm not taking my commission on these. I can still go back, I can still be okay, but it's my backup plan because those people that I made a deal, they don't know any better, right? They don't know any better, they're gonna help me out because they think I help them out. Hmm. So it's about the relationship there. We 
can all think of cases we don't have to look far where folks are being exploited in their workplaces, where folks are working for very low wages, where they have to do the job. Anyone heard of this recently coined term, quiet quitting? Anyone heard that lately in the news? It's where people go to a job and they're feeling like it's a thankless job and they're asking me to do this and that and the other and you know what? I need my time. I need my space. I need my family. I'm going to do the bare minimum. Maybe that's a little passive aggressive or could fall into that. <laughs> Not sure if that's what's going on here. We don't even really know if this rich man and the manager were in cahoots somehow. Again, this parable offers a lot of mystery. Whatever the case, the manager, meaning well, and he likely did help those who he took less debt from. He may have made their day, was helpful to them, and helpful to him for the relationship with them. Hmm. You have to wonder. And then there's all of this about being faithful with little can be trusted with much. This dishonest steward did the best that he could with the resources that he had. And he relied on the mercy of the rich man, the master. Doesn't say he got scolded and sent to jail or tried or anything like that. Come back to him. So what about the times when we find ourselves acting like that? Because we are all sinners, right? I put my name tag on the management. Confession. I like to write notes to my family. Please put the dishes in the dishwasher this way. Sincerely, the management. <laughs> Please do this. <laughs> the management. We can choose where we buy clothes or what clothes we buy, how they are made, or the, the systems that bring food from the farm to our table. Fortunately, in this community, it's straight to the table. But are our clothes going through places of dishonest well, they're going through a sweatshop. We're going where there is trafficking of people. We can make educated, Christian, loving choices around that. And we may find ourselves working in a job that is related to any of that. We may not be able to just up and quit because we need to earn a living. We are called to use the resources that we have. Wealth 
in and of itself is not a horrible thing. It's when it comes between us and God. There are very positive examples of people doing good with their life. Saw on the news last week that the CEO of Patagonia was retiring and giving his billions, his billion dollar company to a trust that would do environmental work from here on out. God has entrusted us with things, great, great responsibilities and small. So we ask ourselves, are we faithful with what God has given us? What does our management look like? You have one job. Maybe two. Love God and love your neighbor. So we go striving to be faithful, knowing we will stumble, trusting in God's grace and mercy. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are.
As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. Gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Congregation may be seated as we receive the offer. gave thanks and gave it for all to drink. 
saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we take of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be
you may remain seated. <clears throat> may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. proceed with benediction, uh, there are a couple of prayer needs in our midst. Um, we have some snowbirds, can I call you that, <laughs> here? They will be departing this week. Pastor Dan and Paul Letts and Bob and Nancy Stefan. Anyone else I'm missing that is going off this week? Well, we would like to send you with a blessing. Would you prefer to come up here or prefer me to come out there? I'll give you the option. You'll stay there? Okay, well, those gathered around them, please lay their, hand, your hands on them if they are comfortable, or re extend your arm in blessing. You gotta go both ways. <laughs> Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the gift of the presence of these, your children, who have brought joy into our midst. We just read in the psalm that you watch our comings and goings and you keep us wherever we are. We pray, Lord, that you will keep them safe as they travel that they would continue to find joy, meaning, and purpose on their journey. That you would sustain them in these months ahead in warmer climates. <laughs> and that you reunite us again according to your will as they travel back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have one more prayer of me. Rick, would you like to come up here? Or you no. Know? <laughs> okay. Um, if I could get some members of the congregation together around Rick is having surgery tomorrow and um, lay hands on Rick with me. Please don't be shy. And others, please extend your arm in prayer and blessing. James 5, 13 through 15. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for this community of faith. We thank you for this, your son, Rick, whom you have named and claimed as your own. Assure him of your presence always, Lord. Reassure him in these minutes and hours leading up to surgery that you've got him in the palm of your hand. 
We pray for those caring for him and treating him. That you would guide them and give them wisdom. That they would care for Rick with grace and compassion and love. Surround all of those close to Rick. Empower them to walk with him on this journey. Assure them of your presence, of your work through it all. But especially draw near to Rick. Send your holy angels to surround him, protect him, and defend him. Hold him in your light and love. Through this procedure, through the recovery, through the healing, through new life. Pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand for the May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you, grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace.